Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are back on the field. Uh, both teams are lined up. I'm going to hand you over to the capable hands of Mr. Angel Hun and Mr. Verone. Up first from the AAA team, we have a Drake Cormorant Dramiel, two Tengus, a Scimitar carries Cormorant Drake, and a Tengu. And this is kill two. Can you hear me there, Angel? And for the Parahelion team, we have a Hurricane, three Cyclones, Drake, two more Hurricanes, Saber, and Scimitar. Pretty interesting match, it looks like. We've got uh, two logistics ships on both teams, uh, two logistics ships on the field, one for either team. Uh, looks to be fairly battlecruiser heavy for Parahelion, with a, quite a bit of missile spammage coming from AAA. Let's see how this goes. So you can hear me, Angel, yeah? We're in this I together? All right, we got the countdown just finished now, so the first match of Lions Tournament 8 is underway. Uh, drones out, we have, uh, looks like the Perillion team warped to zero on the beacon, the Battlecruiser heavy team, and AAA is a little far out running those missiles. Seeing a lot of Hobgoblin 2s from the Parahelion team, and it looks like the Saber from Parahelion is down. First ship of the, me of the Lions Tournament 8 dies, the Saber from Parahelion. Yeah, we got a little bit of damage on uh, AAA's Dramiel. Um, but other than that, things pretty quiet for now. A couple Tengus with a little damage on them, but uh, for the most part, um, not too much going on. Looks like that Scimitar for the Paralelian team is going to be the uh, secondary target. Yep, looks like it. And it looks like Triple A's Cormorant is about to go down. He's in deep hull, but he's getting reps up from the Scimitar. And I don't think down. this Scimitar is going to make it. Oh, there we go. It's low armor going into structure, so we are going to lose that pearly and scimitar. This is looking real strong for AAA right now. Kind of surprising the, uh, the I would have thought the pearly and battlecruiser set up, the, the three hurricanes and three cyclones would have put out a lot of damage, but they're just not doing anything. There must be a lot of E-War going on on that uh, AAA team. Yeah, I'm seeing a, a lot. I'm, see, I'm, I'm really not seeing much damage coming through from those battlecruisers at all. The, even the cormorant that should be really paper thin shouldn't be uh, lasting this long. Although it looks like we just lost a triple A scimitar. So let's see how the damage yeah. goes. All of a sudden damage lighting up, lost another triple A ship. So right away they take two losses. Uh, Hurricane now starting to take some damage for Perillion. Uh, those battlecruisers are not going down that fast. Okay, there he goes through armor real quick. So yeah, their shield tanked. And actually that didn't take long at all. So Perillion's got a put up some serious damage in a hurry or AAA is going to work through these battle cruisers like no problem at all. Absolutely, it looks like those Tengus are doing their job quite well, sitting at medium range and just ripping through the shields of the enemy ships. It looks like they're just yeah. changing targets now. Yeah, switching over to the second hurricane, they'll do that, then the, then the last hurricane after that, and that really should be the the majority of the working damage for Brilliant, so at that point, it's real bad news. Brilliant now starting to get some damage on this uh, AAA Drake. He's, like, low shields, which is a good sign for them. Maybe they're just having trouble making range, um, you know, getting the auto cannons close enough to really put the hurt on. Certainly could be. I mean, there's also a delay when they're switching the ammo types, uh, especially if they're in and out of range. So that might be the cause for delay and damage. And the AAA Drake is now down. We have one more Drake for AAA and two Tengus. As well as it carries. Yeah, and like that, uh, it's, uh, Jeremy will doing a really good job for AAA, keeping uh, this Cyclone tackled away from the fight. And that, you know, that takes a lot of damage away if they're able to split these missile ships way up and uh, keep some of these tackle tacklers um, pinning down a battle cruiser, I mean, that takes out, you know, a fifth or a sixth of their total DPS, and uh, the E War can probably take care of the rest, whatever kind AAA is running. Yeah, absolutely. And in, and the Dreamil can really outspeed um, most of the damage that's coming towards it. Yeah, no problem at all. And it really doesn't even look like the Cyclone's trying. He's got missiles heading for their primary target, which is the Drake. They did take out the first AAA Drake, the second AAA Drake's now like half shields, so they're, you know, they, they are getting some damage, and the damage has really slowed down a lot. I mean, not enough, but 
there's still four battlecruisers, five battlecruisers, I guess, left to go for Perillion. Yeah, but they also haven't even uh, tried to scratch the tanks of the Tengus, and those can be pretty impressive even as a passive setup, so it should be interesting to see what happens. The yeah, you're absolutely right. Down. The last hurricane for Penhel Perihelion is now down, and the AAA Drake is now entering structure. Yeah, two Cyclones sitting on top of it. He'll go down for sure, but like you said, the Tengus, as we saw last tournament, run plenty of tank on their own, so, uh, you know, they've definitely got the hardest part of their fight left to go, which is taking down these Tengus, and uh, the first Cyclone's already, you know, about to hit armor for Prillian, so not looking good for them at all. It's interesting this Karis has lasted so long. I mean, he's really seemed to have an early, early effect on this field. Uh, really limiting the damage that Perihelion has been able to put into AAA. Uh, now he looks like he's taking quite a bit of shield damage. Let's see if he's able to hang on. No damage. Yeah, he's got. To... He's got a few drones on him, but I don't know. I wonder how much difference he's making. He can definitely damp out that uh, cyclone that's pinned by the Dramiel, but most of the rest of the ship should be so close that uh, unless that those dampeners are working in combo with some Ewar on the Tengus, the range really shouldn't be an issue since the cyclones have to close anyway to do their damage. Absolutely, and it looks like he's not making much of a difference anymore. He's now into deep armor. Let's see what happens. Oh, and the oh. AAA Dramiel is about to go down. Yeah, they lost that, Dramiel. so... Dramiel's down. It looks like uh, with the probable loss of the carries, we're going to have three Tengus versus two Cyclones and a Drake. Yeah, I still like the Tengus here. That carry's sitting still about half armor. I don't know what happened to the drones that were hurting him. I guess maybe he just sped up. There's a little more damage. That second Cyclone though now getting close to armor, uh, not looking good for him, and Tengu still taking no damage whatsoever. The Karaz is now down. It's 3v3, AAA, and three Tengus versus Parahelion in two Cyclones and a Drake. Yeah, that second Cyclone in armor, they're like trying to catch up to these uh, Tengus and not having a very good time with that at all. Tengus moving fast enough to keep pretty good range against both the Cyclones. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And judging from rate of fire, it looks like they're using heavy missiles, but I'm not 100% sure. I'm zoomed in on Siths from Havoc right now. Yeah, these Tengus, I, I pulled up an over here, overview here finally. The Tengus are going like 1,700 meters a second, and those Cyclones are topping out at like 1,000. So, really, the Tengus can kite the Cyclones no problem for the rest of the fight if they have to, and the Drake obviously is slower than the Cyclones. So, even if they did have the damage to take the Tengus down, they're not, probably not going to get a chance just because of speed. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And as long as they stay wary of the edges of the arena, they should take this match. It looks like it yeah. looks now that all all AAA has to do is whittle away at the Parahelion team. Yeah, so this may be a sign of things to come. We saw a lot of these uh, kind of Drake Tengui long range setups do well last year, and so far off to a start where it doesn't look like a lot has changed. No, but it, these are definitely counterable setups. Um, the range kiting missile setups are definitely counterable. And some intelligence teams should be able to counter it. And the second to last ship is down for Parahelion. Three Tengu still up, one Drake left for Parahelion Alliance. Yeah, and it'll just be a little while. Their uh, missile is getting to the Drake now. And he's not even uh, able to get it. Oh, he did get a missile away. Uh, it's not an FOF, so I guess he's got a lock, but. Um, not a bad job by Perillion. I mean, getting some ships knocked out for AAA does get them points, and that can be a really big deal if you are able to do well in your second qualifying match. The points you get for taking out these ships in the first match can really separate you from a team that gets, you know, wiped out both matches or wins one and gets wiped out in the other. Yeah, I mean, uh, AAA doesn't lose their hugely expensive ships, the Tengus. But they do definitely lose all those battle cruisers, all their cru all their cruisers, or sorry, all their frigates and their faction frigate. Yeah, the faction frigate kind of sucks for them. Um, not as expensive as these tangos will be, but 
Um, yeah, you definitely don't want to lose stuff unnecessarily. AAA and Alliance that can certainly handle the, the wallet um, hit, I'm sure. But um, still, it's good for the Perlian team to get those points established. Yep, I mean, this, those points make all the difference in going into that finals weekend. And it looks like we are past the peak recharge of the Drake. It's time for it to die. Yeah, finally. It held out a little better than the Cyclones did, and it actually got one of those Tengus down to half shields, which makes me think if the Perillion team would have been able to um, kind of keep their DPS in the fight a little bit longer, they might have had a really good chance. These don't look like Tengus that would have lasted, you know, a super long time through the fight, at least with the Scimitar down. But, um... That's not going to matter, that Drake now in structure, and so with another couple missiles, that will finish match one of Alliance Tournament 8 in favor of against all authorities. Okay guys, that's a convincing first show for uh, AAA. We're going to take a few minutes break and get the other arena set up for Agony Empire and Hydra Reloaded. We will be right back.